Hello everyone and welcome to the final tutorial on sampling in GarageBand. I'm going to make this really quick and to the point uh, as I have a studio client rocking up soon. I've been really busy in the studio so I've got uh, GarageBand here and I'm going to make an empty project. Now the first uh, tutorial was on uh, sampling loops and the second one was making a single sample uh, and breaking that out on a keyboard. This tutorial will be about creating a multi-sample instrument. So something like a drum kit, creating your own custom drum kit. Uh, and I'll show you how to do that using the AU sampler. So I'm just going to select software instrument here. Um, and then when we click on this track, make sure we have the smart controls open. We're going to go down to plugins here and make sure you're on track, not master. And then you just hit that little arrow. Um, and then where it says vintage uh, piano, so this is the actual software instrument loaded on this track right here. We're gonna click the, you can click on uh, the little arrows to the right hand side. See when you hover over it, there's a little up and down arrow. Just click on that and select uh, AU Instruments, Apple AU Sampler. I'm gonna select stereo. If you want to learn uh, a little bit more in depth about using this sampler, you can watch this uh, the previous video. I went into it a little bit more on how to use this. Uh, this is the free sampler that Apple provides on their operating systems and it's usable as an audio unit uh, in GarageBand. So uh, basically what we're going to do, I'll actually leave the link uh, in the in the description to that video as well if you want to if you want to watch that first. Um, so what we do is, Basically, when we fire this up, we want to click the little arrow right here on the show editor. And there is a built-in sample on the first layer here, layer one, and it's just a sign tone. So what we want to do is uh, start building up. Uh, we want to get rid of that sample, um, choose a different file. And instead of uh, breaking it out across the entire keyboard, we're just going to pop it on a single key. So I actually have a, a um, sample pack here that I've created called the Future Trap Sample Pack. Um, and I'm going to leave a link to download this for free uh, in the description. If you join up to my mailing list, you can grab this uh, totally for free. This is also included uh, as a free download if you uh, sign up as a student to my GarageBand course, uh, which I would highly recommend if you want to learn more about GarageBand or become a go from a beginner or intermediate to an advanced to a, a, a pro user of GarageBand. I put a lot of time and effort into the course and uh, getting some really good feedback on that. So what I want to do is with that sign selected, choose file and I'm going to start with a kick drum. We're just going to build a, a, a bit of a drum kit here. So I just hit the space bar there to preview those sounds until I found one that I like. This is on a Mac, of course. And now I have that trap kick for loaded up uh, under this layer. What I want to do is... Um, that's now sampled it across the whole keyboard. I've got a MIDI keyboard here. So if I hit uh, C4, that will be the original uh, sample. And I just want to get rid of that reverb there from the smart controls. So that's that sample there, C4. And um, these are just MIDI uh, references. If you don't know much about MIDI, uh, if you have a MIDI keyboard, um, each MIDI note is assigned the note as it is in musical theory. You've got C, D, E, F, G, G sharp. Uh, a sharp or B flat, depending on what key you're in. Um, and then the no the number that comes after it defines the octave. So C1 is the first octave, the lowest um, octave, all the way up to C8. I think we've got extra notes here uh, in MIDI, goes right up to above C9. So what we want to do is on my keyboard, I want this kick to be triggered when I hit C3. I want the original note to be triggered. So under this little here, key range, I'm just going to type C3 to C3 and then hit enter. And that's going to only trigger the sample. If I hit any other note, it's not going to trigger. Except when I hit the C, I get that note there. 
Okay. So now what I want to do is add a snare. So I just hit this little plus right here to add an extra, another sample. And I'm going to uh, select a snare. Let's have a little listen here to the snares that I've included. So these samples are all samples that I've created. So if you get this sample pack, they're all cleared. You can use them. Um, so under the trap snare, uh, I'm going to now put that on this D note right here, D3. So I'm just going to type D3 and D3. So we're just saying that the key range is D3 to D3. So actually only... And what I want to do is uh, actually uh, make sure that my root note uh, here is actually C3 as well. So it's playing the, the um, snare and then the root note for this one will be D3. So that's the root note is just saying that that's the original sample. Um, so that's it's not, you know, pitching it up or down. Okay, so now um, there's one little trick uh, if you want to add a sample onto the black notes. So I'm going to hit the plus here and add another sample in here. Uh, I'm going to grab hi-hat. Let's just grab any old hi-hat. That'll do. So I want to pop uh, this hi-hat here. So I click on the hi-hat. Uh, on this black note here. So you can either type in D sharp, so D and the hash symbol, or E flat, so the letter E and then the lowercase b for a flat. So if I type in the key range here, let's say E and then a lowercase b, three, E, B, three, that's E flat, three. Okay, so that's that note, and I can type E flat, three. I can also type in here D sharp. So D hash three to D hash three. And the root note is the same, D hash three. That will give you the same result. So now, so now you've built your own custom drum kit that no one else has um, because you're building it from samples uh, any sample that you want, really. You can download any sample pack. You can go to somewhere like splice.com where I get a lot of my samples uh, when I'm producing on the fly. And um, you can go... There's so many free sample packs available online. You can get mine. You can get anyone else's. And then you can start to build your own custom drum kits. And you can go uh, crazy with this. You can have, you know, 10, 20 samples, whatever you want. You can take up every key on the keyboard if you want. And then... When you want to save that, you just go up here where it says uh, this little sort of drop down menu and you just click save as. And I'm going to call this Nat's custom drum kit one underscore trap. And that will just save it um, under audio presets, Apple AU sampler. So you can all, it's like you can save it there or you can save it to an external hard drive, or you can uh, save it anywhere you want, really. Um, and it's just a matter of, now that's saved, um, you can recall that anytime on another track. So if I create a new software instrument track there, I can now load up the AU sampler down here, like we did before, there. And then hit in here and go, uh, it, will, it will just have them down the bottom here. Um, or you, if it's not here, see there it is, Nat's custom drum kit one. If it's not down here, you can go to more and go to load. And then you can find wherever you saved that, um, wherever you saved that, if it was on an external hard drive or a personal folder of yours, you can just load that up. And then now it should sound... Uh, And there are all sorts of other things you can do um, with the um, sampler. Um, you can get into things like uh, attack 
uh, decay, sustained release for different uh, length samples. Um, you can add effects. You can add effects to individual samples. Uh, you can add global effects. You can change the volume, uh, the pitching, all sorts of things. Um, so if you want a really in-depth uh, tutorial on this, um, I'll leave a link in the description to my GarageBand course that I've created on Udemy. Uh, it's very affordable. Um, and uh, it's for people who want to really get the most out of GarageBand and become, you know, a really high-end user, uh, learn to create commercial quality music. So this was just a quick uh, tutorial today. The full tutorial on sampling uh, is available in my course, but I hope uh, this is enough to get you started with creating your own custom drum kits. And then it's as simple as uh, to use that as uh, selecting a beats per minute and recording either on a MIDI uh, keyboard. So I can do that now. So there's my little loop there. And then that's my little drum track, basically. I can put a bit more reverb on that. Uh, or if I don't like that reverb, I can use the master reverb down here. And I can uh, go in there and Select those and quantize them so they're all on a grid. And then I can loop that if I like, or copy and paste it. Ooh, let's make that the full bar length there. So I'm missing one there, so let's go in. See, there's my hi-hat there. I can just draw one in if I like. Let's just loop that one region and see what we've got. So we can change the volume of the individual samples by going back and clicking on that AU sampler there to get the graphical user interface back again. So if you want that kick drum to be a bit louder, you just go and select the trap kick there. And then under volume here, you can push that up a bit more. Now you can hear that's a bit louder. And... Uh, you know, you can you can go crazy with that. So that's how you create your own custom drum kits and save them. Um, and you can use that not just for drums. You can use that. You can make a sample board and you can load up any samples you want in there, um, you know, for whatever purpose you want. The sky's the limit when you can start sampling and using custom audio. That breaks you free of all of the presets in the library. Um, and so if you just use all these presets down here, there's some quite nice sounds, but they start to get boring after a while because there's only a limited amount. But when you learn to use the sampler here, you can get a sound from anywhere that you can get your hands on it and um, you can become highly original. So I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. Uh, that is the end of the three-part series on sampling. I'll leave the link in the description to the first two episodes if you want to watch those. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.